Hi guys. So this is going to be the second lecture and we're going to be covering Photoshop for this. Um, I'm going to give you guys this demo and we're going to just going to kind of go through everything in Photoshop real quick. Just cover all the basics that you guys will need. And then we will have a second video for the milestone. So let's get into it. Um, <clears throat> I already have 2024 open here. Um, I did recently update, so it's still occasionally throwing me little pop-ups, um, but we'll keep an eye out for those. So I'm going to go ahead and hit new file here. Um, there it is. Okay. Um, obviously we have our custom presets. If I want to do web, it's going to set it for a certain web size. Um, if I want to do print, then I would set it to a US paper size. Um, and if I want to do just kind of whatever, um, I would just go to custom. So, um, I'll go ahead and just change this. We'll do, uh, 800 by 600 pixels at 72 pixels an inch. Um, don't worry about that setting too much. Background white, um, we could change that if we want, uh, but we won't. And then I'll just go ahead and hit OK. Here we are in uh, Photoshop. Um, one of the things I often do if I'm starting a new file is I would just immediately double click on the background here. Um, it's going to give us this new layer pop up, but why I'm doing this is so that it unlocks that layer so that if I need to, I do have the transparency ready to go if I need it. Um, so let's begin and just start working our way down. Um, your first tool right here is going to be the move tool. V is the shortcut on the keyboard. Um, click on things to move them around. If you have multiple things, um, let me add a couple layers real quick and then we'll put that on the layer. Um, so if I'm on this layer right here and then I try to click on this, I have a setting here that says auto select and show transform controls. These two buttons are magic. If it's not checked on your current machine, make sure those get checked because otherwise you would have clicked on this and you don't see anything right um, or you would still be on layer zero and you would move the background so if you had trouble with that um, go ahead and do auto select and show transform controls and that's going to make it so much easier to just grab what you're clicking on i think i hope those are automatically on these days um, but i don't think they are um, we uh, yeah, we won't bother with our poor tool. That doesn't apply to this class. Uh, marquee tool is the next one. You can hit M on the keyboard, and that's going to let us select an area on the screen. Um, if I am within a certain layer, so like if this layer right here with the gray circle, oh my god, go away. Um, if this layer with the gray circle is here, I can then click back to V, switch back to that tool, and I can move this chunk around. Um, oh my god, how do we get this to go away? One second. Okay, there we go. It's going to pop up here out of the way. So um, now that we've got that there, we can just kind of move it around. Um, it's going to do different things, but I can just deselect it. And now this layer looks like that. So um, you can do different things with the marquee tool. You can diff do different shapes. Um, typically, you're going to just want to leave it as a rectangle like that if you use it all. Um, you have a couple other settings here. Um, a couple things that I occasionally use will be fixed size or ratio. So if I do a ratio of like, yeah, I'm already set to four by three, then it'll always be that size no matter how I drag it out here. Um, and so if I need exactly a four by three area, again, I can grab that section and we can move that. Um, I will hit M to switch back to the marquee tool and then I can click away. If you're ever having trouble, you're wondering why something isn't act, acting on your screen, um, always look for the little uh, crawling ants going around right there, and you might have something selected. Because if I have this selected, I can't do anything over here, but you see how it just does. It only affects inside of that area. Um, you can do select inverse. There it is. And now I can work outside of that area, and anything I do inside of this box doesn't matter. All right, so um, next is gonna be the polygon lasso tool. This is kind of just the same idea as the, uh, um, as the marquee tool. Um, it generates an area that we can select from. Um, as long as you get this little closure, see how when I get close, you get that little circle. As long as you do that, it'll close that up. Otherwise, it kind of just keeps going until you close it. Um, switch to V and boom, I can move it around. So, I mean, obviously a lot of this movement kind of similar. Um, 
yeah, most of those rest of those are kind of similar too. Um, magic wand tool, um, not super important for what we do, but uh, uh, yeah, don't typically use it for this. Uh, crop tool we don't really use. Eyedropper is great um, if you want to sample something. Right now I'm just black on white right here, but if I switch it, it's going to always choose the top one. So if I click here, now my uh, selection layer there is going to be black. Um, healing brush isn't that great. Um, it does a couple things. There's the spot healing brush and remove tool. These, again, they're kind of just more if you're doing photo editing and stuff. We don't really do that in this class in that way. Um, brush tool is my favorite. Um, when you have it, you can uh, click the little bracket keys and change the size. I think that's a lot faster than going up here all the time and changing settings. Uh, one of the really fun things about this tool is you can come in here and open up these settings and uh, just kind of change what's going on here. Um, this whole panel kind of deserves its own lecture to itself. Um, I'm not going to go into it as much this semester, but um, you can do different things like uh, if we choose, let's see, scattering. We'll go to our scatter menu, both axes. This is always really fun. Um, let's see, count jitter. Where's color dynamics? Foreground, background jitter. We'll throw in a blue color. That didn't go blue. Um, and then you can do stuff like that. Um, it kind of gets interesting sometimes with some of the stuff that it'll let you do. Um, yeah, just kind of going weird with it. Um, we will get a little bit more into this later in the semester, um, towards the end of the semester, kind of when we want to design our project boards, presentation boards. Um, but typically you aren't going to be doing too much in Photoshop regarding that. But some of these tools are fun to kind of spice up a background, not like that. Um, so yeah, brush settings are fun, um, but we'll go ahead and turn all these off for now so that it goes back to boring. Um, so uh, next one here is gonna be the clone stamp tool. This one again has a bunch of uses, but it's typically more often um, when you're gonna try to Photoshop, actually Photoshop things. If you just hold down Alt, click somewhere, and then move somewhere else, it'll clone that um, based on the position of the mouse right there. So if I hold Alt down here, oops, hold down Alt, there we go. Did it reset? Oh, it's on the wrong layer. Yeah, we. So um, you can see, you can do a couple fun things with this, um, but again, it's not super applicable to us and um, our milestones can be fairly limited um, with it. History brush, not really important. Eraser tool, um, one of the fun things about eraser tool that it, um, you can kind of get into the weeds with is it also has its own brush settings. Um, so you can, again, use the same options here. You just don't have color dynamics because you're erasing. Um, you know, scatter, um, turn the opacity down, flow down, and you can do weird little patterns like that. Um, but it, it is kind of just, it is its own little tool here. Um, we'll go down to the gradient tool. I'll create a new layer here and we'll just do a gradient um, front to back here. Um, obviously there's sort of, you know, only so much you can do with that and um, we're not trying to get into a full class. Blur, sharpen, and smudge, more for photo editing. Same with the sponge uh, sponge tool, burn, and dodge. Um, pen tool is here, um, but if you're gonna be doing any vector work like this, just go to Illustrator, um, which we'll be covering next week. And then uh, text tool, um, let's go ahead and switch this back to black and white. Um, Okay, um, something that's nice, you can come up here and click the uh, checkbox, but if you hit the enter button that's on the right side of the keyboard, it'll finish that out for you. Um, you can do stuff like uh, the text follows um, and warp the text. Um, again, this is something that kind of just works better in Illustrator. Um, 
you can change your text styles I've got all of them stay away from the forbidden font um, yeah that's kind of all that right there um, direct selection tool so I was using um, V with the move tool this kind of replaces the need to get the direct selection tool because um, I well now I've filled everything up too um, because this is a little bit more intuitive now that that's there um, and we're not doing that so yeah we're not doing paths so um, or we're not doing pen tool rather so um, let's move on to rectangle tool again you've got all your different shapes here but again once you get to this point you should probably be an illustrator anyway a um, couple other things let's delete that delete that actually no let's keep this looking super 80s um, what is this? Where are you? Weird. Um, so you can do different things like layer, layer style. Um, we'll throw in a drop shadow here. Make this just look super bad. Um, let's see. Let's give this layer some transparency. So we'll get a little bit of opacity here. Um, oh, and then we... Oh, no, that's not raster. That's... Yeah. That's a vector shape still. Um, we can do different things like uh, we can add a stroke to it. So strokes are kind of handy, especially um, when your project one, you might want to jump into a couple strokes. And I'll have that, I'll show that more in the video for that. Um, just doing different positions, blend modes, um, inner shadows, inner glows, um, stuff like text like this. See how that got super hard to read? Well, now I can come in here, layer style, throw a stroke on it, and now it gets even more terrifying, um, but uh, at least easier to read compared to what it looked like. Um, the hand tool, so uh, this is just for you to move around. If you hit H, you can switch to it. I'm not set up in a way, so if you hit F on the keyboard, watch, see how the, everything kind of, oh, everything changes. So that just went full screen. Um, whatever that is and then here um, it's this next one right here where it actually when you're in the full screen um, my screen's bigger than this recording box um, but uh, get back there we go um, if I did want to pan around you can do that um, my preference is if you hit spacebar it's gonna switch to that pan tool anyway so I'm actually going to go back to show you so right now I have to hit H and, oh, it's not going to do it because I'm not set up. So there, I've got that. But if I'm just on this, I can hit space bar and start moving again. Um, as far as movement around here as well, um, you can also hold down the Alt key and then roll the mouse wheel and it'll roll in depending on where your mouse is. So if I move the mouse over here, it will now zoom in here. Um, if I want to go to the center and then it's also going to zoom out relative to where you are So if I move the mouse up here and zoom out, it's going to continue moving me down to the right um, Space bar alt to zoom in you can get around pretty quick um, Something else uh, you can do it plus uh, Control plus and minus on the keyboard But again, I think it's faster if you've already got your hand on the mouse and one on the keyboard to just hold down alt and mouse wheel in and out um, So let's get out of full screen here Come on. Oh, now it's stuck. Okay. There we go. Okay. There's my beautiful artwork again. Um, and then again, zoom tool. Again, pan and zoom are kind of useless once you know that you can just hit spacebar and use alt and mouse wheel. So, um, let's see. A couple things that are here. Um, the default settings right here, you can hit X. So if I have... Um, you know, I can switch these back and forth. So if I have different colors there and I want to quickly apply two new ones without having to come and click this little tiny thing that they've got here, um, I can do that. So if I want to change this blue to something darker, switch to the red, something darker, and I can keep working. Um, if I want to switch back to this default setting right here, you just hit D on the keyboard and you'll see it'll reset to black and white there as well. Um, this right here we'll probably be getting into um, for the present or for your um, uh, for your project one 
or actually, sorry, for your milestone. Um, so let me grab an image for that and we'll just kind of get into that and work through some stuff real quick. All right, so um, I just loaded in a picture of my puppy back when she was a puppy. Now she's a full grown dog. Um, this was back when she used to be cute. Now she's a nightmare, huh, Pat? She's sitting right here. Anyway, so, um, so if we wanted to do something to her, we could do something like hit W and choose the magic wand tool. Um, we've got different tolerances up here. So in this case, I'm going to choose a tolerance of, let's go with 16. And you can see that it doesn't select huge areas here. Um, and is a, because I have contiguous anti-alias and I'm holding down control, it's kind of adding to my selection slowly as I go around. But this is still kind of a mess of a selection, right? So one thing that's super quick is if you click on this button right here, it puts you in the click mask mode and you can hit um, Q as well to toggle in between these modes. So instead of actually working with the weird little selection tools that it's got, I can now come in here and I can use the brush tools to change how these are working. And now that I've screwed my brush tools up, that's really great. Um, so let me set these back to... Um, let me set that back up to there for the eraser, for the brush. Okay, brush is good. So um, if I wanted to do this, I wouldn't mess around too long with like going, okay, well, I've got to use the magic wand and then I'll switch to the marquee tool, which is still stuck in fixed ratio. Um, you could come in here real quick and use the polygonal lasso tool. So um, deselect all that, and then I could just kind of quickly go along here. And kind of make my way around, and I'm just going to get it. Go really, excuse me. Excuse me. Anyway, um, stupid menu. Okay. Um, so anyway, once I've got that kind of selected out like that, what I can do is I can, oh, it's still on a goofy eraser. Uh, scattering shape, texture, smoothie. Okay. So now that I've got this going on here, oh, we need to turn these back up too. Um, so now I can erase. Um, and, and so what I'll do is I'll just start out really big. Ooh. and watch the hardness as well so that it doesn't get super blurry because I want to keep it a very hard edge um, for a lot of this. So I can go really quickly around here. Um, I can use the bracket keys again to quickly adjust the size of the brush that I'm using. Um, and typically what I'll do is I'll actually cut in a little bit into the thing. Um, and if I'm trying to get real accurate, um, what I'll do is I'll actually kind of erase most of stuff. Um, and then again, mouse wheel and alt, and I can zoom in here. I'll hit B and switch to the brush tool, space bar to move up. And then just kind of trace back everything that I want. Um, and for the like toenails here, we'll just kind of get a brush like that. And so just alternating um, in this quick neck, quick mask mode between um, between the brush tool and the eraser tool. And I, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell what's dog and what's um, bad JPEGs. Um, but we can quickly just kind of go through here and grab things. Um, if I slip up, like I just did right there, I totally didn't do that on purpose. Um, I can switch back to the eraser tool real quick and just cut that little spot out right there. Um, and then get back right on the brush tool. So alternating like that, just using a couple keys. Again, it's just the brush, the eraser, um, alt and mouse wheel to zoom in, space bar and mouse, left mouse button to uh, pan. Um, and I can very quickly just kind of move around here and selecting things. Um, one other tip that kind of comes in handy is if you have a long section that's kind of straight, if I stop right here, I have no keys down. So I'm going to move the mouse over here, hold down shift and click. See how it did a straight line there? I can do it here. So if I click, hold down shift, and then click here, it's going to draw a straight line. Um, if you start drawing and then hold down shift, 
it's going to lock you into a direction, right? So if I click here and then start moving, it's going to do, like I said, that straight line. Um, it's going to just do left, up, down, left, right. Um, we'll just make this bigger, race faster. So um, Photoshop's just kind of one of those programs where if you're, oops, wrong tool. Um, if you're working on it, you just want to kind of get used to using some of those tools um, and figure out ways to work quicker. Um, especially since using anytime you're in Photoshop, it's going to be secondary to what you're working on. The, the faster you are at using Photoshop, the quicker you can get back to generating content for the rest of your project. So I'll just finish kind of roughly getting her floof right there. And looks like we have a little bit extra right there. And again, getting in closer kind of helps you identify what you're looking at a little bit better. Um, so there we go. So now if I switch back out of the quick mask mode, um, it looks like I have an opposite selection than what I wanted. So I'll just go to select. I will do inverse. I always forget where that's at. Um, and now I have this whole uh, bit of the dog selected. Oops. I should have that bit of the dog selected. Oh no. Why did we do that? Um, hmm. Okay, well, let's just double click on the background here. Um, it's something to do with this. Just delete that. Sure. We wanted this layer. All right, so there's my dog. I got her selected. Um, let's go ahead and. Oh. What was that? Quick mask. Oh, see, there's a little tiny bit of red right there, um, which is one of the things to watch out for when using this. Um, is uh, that some of these opacity tools, like uh, if I'm at a fairly decent amount of opacity right here, it's actually going to do a weird partial selection like that. So do a double check before you move anything. Um, we can go ahead and get rid of that. Okay. Um, so that's our quick mask. Um, we'll go ahead and copy her, new layer, throw her up here, delete the image, um, and there she is, being adorable. Um, okay, so uh, that's kind of, again, just we're just jamming through Photoshop, making sure you guys are all up to date on it, um, and then what we'll do next is we'll jump into the milestone for this week. So I'll see you guys in the next video.